What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Yarrell. I want to welcome you guys to Spilling All the Tea. Today, it's all about that reality. All right, I'm talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season seven, and this happens to be episode eight. So this is tea with a side of squash beef. Now, I like the sound of this because this is the first episode from a YouTube channel. So, you know, hey, Spilling All the Tea episode is called, what is it again? Tea with a side of squash beef. So, I'm going to be spilling the tea, give you guys my reaction to, dare I say it, the rad shit. Y'all going to see me after the complete motherfucking food on here. So, hey, you might as well get ready. And since I'm going to be spilling the tea, damn it, I might as well be sipping the tea too. You know what I'm saying? Got me some Long Island right here. Yes. You know what? I'm going to taste this right quick though. Oh, that's it. So, grab my notes. My bad. Give me just one second while I grab these notes right quick. So, got my notes right here. So, <clears throat> we pick, we, well, we start off with, you know, Phaedra talking to a mother, discussing, you know, where they were the night before. So, they was at uh, Miss Demetria McKinney's video release party. Now, if y'all, for y'all who don't know her, you know, she's in the Tyler Perry movies, so in the play, uh, Why Did I Get Married, she played Trina. You know, she also played in House of Pain, so there you go for y'all who try to figure out who she is, all that good jazz. <clears throat> but she was uh, dropping her uh, new video for, you know, it's called Keep It 100, <clears throat> featuring the Brat Tat Tat from Chi-Town. Gotta represent Chicago right here. But... You know, had that little party thing going on. So she's talking to her mother. She's like, Yeah, pretty much at this party. And, you know, they ain't have, you know, party for the video. Ain't had a video. But hold the, hold the hell on. Damn it, that was shade. All right, you could have just said, Hey, Ma, last night, you know, we was at this uh, video release party and and went straight into what's going on with the Apollo. Now, what you going to do is you going to sit here and throw some shade on Mr. Demetrius. I'm going to need you to come correct, Miss Southern Belle. But I digress. But she talks and <clears throat> pretty much said that, uh, you know, even in the uh, intro that, you know, it's like, okay, well, Apollo wants to talk to me, <clears throat> you know, uh, in the club. And the question was like, you know, does he try to talk at home? Now, if y'all remember from the previous episode, she's telling him, this is not the place to talk. You want to talk, let's talk at home. And then Apollo's like, well, when I try to talk to you at home, you know, you don't want to talk. And she's like, no, what you do is you come home, you get changed, you head to the nightclub. That's what she said in the previous episode. Okay. But in this one, she said her mother, okay, well, whenever, you know, he decides he wants to talk, it's mostly just a blame game. Hold the fuck on. So what we doing is we contradicting. I'm just saying, I mean, Miss Lawyer, you can't be sitting here saying one thing and then you going around saying another. I'm just saying, I don't know where they do that at, but I'm just pointing it out. Just something for y'all. All right. Let's see, what else? And then <clears throat> she claims that she had given Apollo to my business, you know, ideas, certain little things that he can do to venture out in terms of business and making money. But she was like, oh, well, he didn't want to listen. <clears throat> this your help me. This your man. It don't matter what he doing, how he feeling, you should have said something. Now, this guy right here, because like I said, I'm giving y'all this from my perspective, a man's perspective. Granted, I'm crazy as hell. But <clears throat> I look at it this way. How in the fuck, I put emphasis on the are you married to this man? But you don't know what the fuck you doing. Come on now. I smell bullshit from a motherfucking mile away. Just saying. You don't know what the fuck he up to. You want to say, you know, y'all want to talk about offices and projects, him renovating houses, but, you know, if you go back in past season, he ain't got no damn paint, no nothing on the motherfucking shirt or the tank top, whatever the fuck he was wearing. But, you know what I'm saying? You want to sit here and say, you know, he's doing this, he's helping doing that. Come on now, y'all. <clears throat> and it's like, you... Got him, you know, got, was messing around with him, got him, I guess, like a reduced sense or whatnot, and then you made him your man. So those were only words like, you should have been on it. Should have been on it. Granted, I'm not going to sit here and say a 
follow the need to be held accountable for the shit that he did because he does. But for you to sit here and try to play naive and like, well, I gave him some better. Come on now. Come on now. Come on somewhere there. Please. <clears throat> so now we get around. So, you know, that's what happened first. So now we get around to Nene. Now, I'm going to just be honest. I'm really not feeling Nene no more. You know, and typically when her parts come on, I tend to fast forward the fuck. But since I'm going to go ahead and, you know, give you guys my recap on it, I sat there and watched it. So she's catching up with Portia, you know, and to see what Portia, you know, has been getting into since the last time they talked. So, you know, she decides that she, okay, well, you know, last night we was at Demetria's, uh, you know, music video party, you know, there was no music video, this second motherfucking person, come on now, I got it, you want to talk about it, but, you know, what you really doing is you giving her some more relevancy, but at the same time, what you're doing is both you and now Phaedra, you want to sit here and take her platform and you want to step on it to try to make yourself seem better, come on now, I need for y'all to sit here now like some motherfucking ladies and stop acting like some damn little girls, just fucking saying. That's it. But she's like, there was no video, but at the party. You know, again, there's that whole butt thing. Should have been, I was there and this happened anyway. But she was like, you know, Cynthia walked in, she ain't say hi to me, da da da. I don't know the time is like, get that shit the fuck up out of here. Then, you know, next day you know, Nene won't sit here and play Peacemaker. Nene. One motherfucking way. Peacemaker. Trick, please. Any motherfucker. So she's just like, you know what, I'm going to invite, you know, Cynthia and Kenya out so we can sit here and, you know, just try to, you know, squash. So I'm going to invite them out to lunch. Now, she said it's Porsche. Won't y'all keep that in mind? But, you know, that's what happened with them right there. I'm going to sit here and take a smaller admission to read on my nose and sip some of this tea, you know, because I'm spilling quite a bit right now. Mm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Candy's at her aunt's house, talking about how her mom had moved into her new house. Now, for y'all that don't know, Mama Joyce, Candy's mama, was living in Candy's old place. And trouble when I say that place, you know, it was pretty decent until they upgraded. Trouble when I say Candy upgraded. But, you know, they moved into this new place. You feel me? And gave that to Mama Joyce. Now, here's the thing. You know, I love my mama. I love my dudes. She know that. But it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, people get to the point where, you know, they just unmotherfucking grateful. Because she wasn't happy with that. But I think what it was is she's not happy that she with Todd. Because she don't want nobody to be with Candy because she feels that, okay, my safety net is going to be gone and you're going to take her away from me, leave me that too. That's pretty much what the fuck it is. But she's not trying to say it. And this reminds me of Mario and his mother. But that's Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Probably should have did one on that. Just saying. Maybe when I see two come out. But it's like, <clears throat> okay, being a little bit ungrateful. They, now, I'm just, it's just a little, you know, take you back a little bit. Mama Joy <clears throat> had her stay in boyfriend, which that shit kind of blew, you know, it threw me for a motherfucking loop. Because you want to sit here and clown your daughter for being with Ty, but you shack him. Granted, I know Mama Joy's a little, a little up there in age. I'm just saying, no shade. Purely no shade, because like I said, my mama's up there too. Difference is my mama got some damn sense about it. Yeah, I fucking said it. Candy, I love you, but your mama ain't got no damn sense. But uh, <clears throat> what really got me is just like, you have him in there. Y'all tear up her house. If you go back, if not the last episode, the episode before, you will see it. They destroyed this woman's house. Shrunk a bathroom, shrunk a closet, but you ain't fix it. And then Candy sitting here, <laughs> make it, make it, rain, rain. Then bought her mama a brand new motherfucking house. Literally, I guess, like what, down the street from now? I'm just saying, you know, I know she got some Grammys, some hits and whatnot. She writing some killer motherfucking song. Damn it, I wish I had money to blow like that. But I don't wish that motherfucker hard. But she, so getting back to the, you know, storyline, you know, they're talking about, uh, when she's talking to her aunts about how, you know, they just closed the deal. <clears throat> Mama got, you know, a new house, but she don't want to give me keys to her house if she ain't got keys to my house. 
not finna sit here and dive too much into dialogue, but this what the fuck I'ma say. Real talk, I understand you bought it as a gift. Damn it, I'ma have a motherfucking key to the house that I just motherfucking bought. Better yet, I'ma have a key to my mama's house, period. Me being me, I still have a key to my mama's house. Cause you know, like I said, I, I like I said I have work that I do. I'm not gonna put all it out there. This ain't none of y'all business. But you know, when I come home, you know, I'm over there with her, make sure mom's good, <clears throat> you know, make sure you know she good to go. But even given all of that, you know, I have a key, so if something go left and I get like a distress call, we ain't sitting here trying to break into the property. I got a key, I can get in, I can see what's going on with my mom or my stepfather. I'm just saying. So, but here's but the difference in this is Candy paid for the house, and when she paid for the house, mom snatched up and snatched the key. Here's the thing Candy, trust me, I love you. You are the reason that I started watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. You were the reason. Because, you know, I love Escape. You, my little secret, that was, that, that was my jam way back when. But <clears throat> it's just like you doing too much. you giving your mama a little too much wiggle room. I'm just saying, hearing this from a man's perspective, I know you don't want to hit ties. So if you watch this, I'm just giving you my jam sign. But it's just like that right there was kind of crazy to me. It's like, you know, you can't have a key if I got to give your house da 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 who just paid for this motherfucking house? That's all the fuck I gotta say. Sip some little tea, you know. Actually, I ain't even gonna sip some tea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go, you know, right on to the rest of my damn nose. So, Candy, well, actually, it was uh, Candy's aunt who brings up, hey, you know, you was just in New York, you know, Todd from New York, I believe, from the Bronx. And they met up with his mother. So she wanted to know how that went, how to meet with the mom went. And trust me, if you ain't seen the last episode, you I want to go back and see that episode because uh, Mama uh, Sharon went hard. Just saying. I, she went hard. I, I mean, I was just like, ooh, 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 damn. But anyway, you know, she mentioned how, you know, they were there, you know, his mother was upset because, you know, you called her, you know, a hoe. Pause. Backtrack. If I was in Todd's place, and if my mother was Todd's mother, now granted, my mama, she is a lady, she is a woman, she is distinguished. Don't get it twisted, she from the hood, but I'm sorry, you're not gonna sit here. First of all, I'm not gonna sit here and listen to you. <clears throat> I call my mama no hoe, or insinuate that she's a hoe, my daddy a pimp. You got me and the game fucked up, okay? If I'm not gonna let a random female sit here and talk shit on my brother, regardless of what relations y'all have, I damn sure ain't finna let nobody talk shit on my dudes. Now, I will say this. <clears throat> I'm one of those where if you wrong, you wrong. So if my mom is wrong, I'm gonna let her know. I'm gonna let my brother, whoever know, you wrong. I'm not gonna support you in your wrongness, but I'm still gonna be here if you need to show the lean on. Let's think about family. I will be here, you know, if you need me. You need to lean on me when you're not strong. But, I'm not going to sit here and support you. Because in me doing it, it's just like, yeah, I support all the wrong that you do. Squash that. But she mentions that. And then she also mentions the fact that, you know, Sharon told Candy to tell her mama, hey, when you get back, tell your mama I said, I'm going to punch you in the face. You want hell on Oh, people get crock up in this motherfucker. She going to punch her in the face. She said, make sure you tell your mama I'm going to punch her in the face. Now, mind you, I probably wouldn't relay that message because, I mean, I'm just saying that's just sitting here just pouring some motherfucking gasoline on fire, but, you know, if y'all can go back, like, I believe it was like last season, and, you know, yeah, I think it was last season, they didn't want Candy to get married to Ty. Yes, this is a tangent. You know, it was just like the old folks mafia and then they were saying that Cameron, Candy's our friend, was fucking tired. And then, you know, they was there looking at bride dresses and mom getting up trying to sit here and fight Cameron and, you know, the old folk mafia, her auntie sitting here trying to gang in, gang up. Come on now. All I'm going to say is this. Outside of the ladies on this damn show, they get paid to act a motherfucking fool. I'm going to say this. I respect my elders. Y'all grown as fuck. Sit down like some motherfucking ladies and talk this shit out. Real talk. If not, don't say shit to each other and uh, keep it moving. To the left. But I digress. So, um, yeah. And the last thing that happened before I sip this tea 
and kind of, you know, get back to this, you know, she also, Candy, was talking to her, um, her aunts and her mom, like, you know, because she had this play of Mother's Love, wanted them to come out on show and kind of, like, see what was going on and, and even, like, kind of get them in the show, because, you know, ticket sales kind of like, doo, doo, but they try to take it on the road. And they, <laughs> not a creature was stirring, not even the mouse. They ain't say shit. They looked at her like she was motherfucking bad shit crazy. But from Candy's perspective, you know, I want them to see who this shit was inspired by. Come on now. You doing a pound too motherfucking much. I'm just saying. Candy, I love you, boo-boo. I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you to do something. Come just a little bit more correct. Okay. Ooh. That T right there hit. Give me a second while I go ahead and give me a little baby. So now we move on to Cynthia, Cynthia Al <clears throat> with uh, Claudia trying to go ahead, you know, kind of fix her up. You know, Claudia is not ugly, you know, but she can be a little homely. Damn it, I said it. So she's thinking how to get him up, you know, get a head did, all this other good stuff. And, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> not going to dig too much into that because I'm not going to spend too much time with it. There's not a whole lot happening there. Of course, they bring up, you know, Demetrius, you know, um, show again. All I'm going to say is this, if y'all want to turn this shit into a drinking game, but every time they mention either her or the video, either or, even they mention both of the same day, I said, take a shot for every last motherfucking one, I can't remember damn tea, yo, and we feeling yourself by the end of that motherfucking show. But, um, <clears throat> they talking about it, throwing shade, oh, I left early, you know, they're like, oh, well, you know, I left early too, who the fuck cares? Y'all just fucking being messy. And then, uh, it's at this point, Cynthia get the, uh, text from, uh, Nene, like, hey, <clears throat> you know, I want you to sit, you know, come here and dinner, bring your friend and bring your bestie and bring her over there. I don't give a fuck what the fuck she called exactly, but, but bring her over, you know, bring Kenya with you. Now, you know, as I'm talking, I'm going to go my notes, so don't get back and I'm not really looking at y'all. But <clears throat> of all motherfucking people to sit here and want to play Peacemaker, it's Nene. I right, come on out. <clears throat> Let's look at this shit for what the fuck it is. You was on, was on a new norm. Actually, she probably is, but new norm. But I think new norm was over. Glee is dumb, but she was on there. You know, your ass on motherfucking Broadway. You are an executive producer of this motherfucking show. Let's call this shit what the fuck it is. You don't want to sit here and have no motherfucking peace with motherfucking people. What you want to do <clears throat> is get them around at a motherfucking table. Hopefully, some shit ensues, and this is going to create some good motherfucking TV. I'm just saying. I took motherfucking cinematography, and I've also had some motherfucking, um, you know, plays and shit, and done videos and whatnot, like I'm doing for this, but I'm not really, you know, doing a whole lot with it. That's not here nor there. But I'm just saying. So, it's just like, you try to be a peacemaker, get the fuck out of here. Any motherfucking way. Moving on. Kenya is out with her, you know, um, <clears throat> her uh, male friend, Brandon, you know, I guess that's her gay love. I don't best friend at this point I even think been as far as she looking for an office space pause <clears throat> and if this is shade I can give two motherfucking fucks but again I'm spilling the tea I'm drinking the tea I'm feeling myself right now I'm feeling real good too but how the fuck is it you have a production company and all this other stuff but you don't have a motherfucking office when your company that produced this did this put this out but you ain't got a motherfucking office but you looking for an office space Excuse me, because I'm, I'm going to say this. Y'all get mad. Whatever. There's a lot of Gary, but really, bitch? Whatever. Get that shit the fuck out of here. So, next thing you know, <clears throat> you have uh, Cynthia calling um, Kenya, telling her, hey, you know, um, Nene wants us to meet up with her. I'm not asking you to go. I'm telling you to go. And Kenya's like, you know what? It's a good chance poor chance might be there. Was she there? Hmm. We gonna see. So the next thing we see is Claudia meeting up with her um, mother and her grandma. Her mother is uh, of the lighter complexion again. Not really digging too much into hers because I'm gonna tell you why just a little bit when I get to the next part. Her mother, her, I'm sorry, her grandmother, who's 90 years old and looking really good, but not even might I say, not but not you know trying to come home to her. But anybody that know me know I do like coolers. You know I like a woman with a little bit of experience. I know I tell a lot about myself. I really don't care. I know me. I love my truth. But I'm just saying she was looking really good. All I'm saying. 
and she a straight talker too. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. So she picks him up from the airport, moving along. This is the part right here that I feel is a little juicy. So Candy and Todd in, you know, Chocolate Factory. She talk, you know, she's talking about how she stressed because you know they really not getting a whole lot, you know, when it comes to ticket sales, you know, blah 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 blah. Moving on, she tells out about the conversation that she had with her mother and her aunts. I got it, you talking to him, but it's one of those things where like, okay, this is gonna create some good TV and like I said, you know, I wish I would have some other reaction videos so I can really tell you how I feel about they damn relationship. I think they so cute, but it's just it's a shit with they damn parents. Too motherfucking much. So you know, Todd asks, you know, Candy, okay, was well, your mom gonna apologize for <laughs> Candy looking pretty much not like going in, but it's like, no, nah, she's not gonna apologize. You know, you know, it's one of the things where she just stands firm and Todd, you know, his thing. You know, and I really want to talk about this for a second because I'm a man, of course. Todd's man, you know, want to give y'all this from a man's perspective. <clears throat> okay. But, you know, it's just like, Todd has been very patient. Very patient. You know, like I said, y'all see the yarmulke? I'm tipping it to you, Todd. Like I said, you've been very, very patient with your mother-in-law. But <clears throat> what gets me is that, you know, she had insinuated that she was with Cameron, Candy's friend, and uh, I think like assistant, if not, then somebody on the team. You know, you also <clears throat> did try to pay somebody off to try to set him up to prove that he is this bad individual. Sit here saying that, oh, you just trying to take all her money, but what the fuck are you doing? I'm just saying. I'm going to call a motherfucking spade a spade. And it's just, and then, you know, you going in on him, talking shit on him, and then you talking shit about his mama, here's the thing, real motherfucking talk, <clears throat> you know, I'm saying this because, you know, I do watch Mob Wild, okay, I'm going to have one on that, you know, real soon, if it come out tomorrow, you know, or it should be coming out right now, again, I'm in Korea, so there's like a little, you know, there's that 12 to 14 hour time gap, so <clears throat> I'll be doing one on that if it comes out, but, you know, it's one of these ways, with, you know, with my wife, even, you know, just with that culture, just like, we can sit here and beef all day long. Don't bring family into it. So, Mama Joseph, your beef is with Ty. Why you bring his parents into it? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a low blow. Honestly, I think you try to sit here and go for your damn 15 minutes, man, because the Mama Joseph from the previous seasons loved her. Peacemaker, trying to bestow wisdom. This one, she is motherfucking messy. But Todd is just like, you know what? <clears throat> Giving all this, it's your mama don't want to apologize. Your mom popping off in the mouth. Whoop, whoop, you motherfucker. Whoop. This is what we're going to do. When we have a holidays, if your mother's going to be there, my mother's not going to be there, and I'm not. Candy not feeling it. Just like, so, we just going to spend the holidays alone. Here's the thing. Ladies, let me explain this to you. All right. There's some of us men out there, we some down ass motherfucking men. You know how they say, his friend, a down ass bitch, a ride or die, damn it, you got motherfucking men like that, damn it, I'm one, I'm lower than the motherfucker, I'm gonna sit here and try to work it out with you until I can't take no motherfucking more back, like I said, Carrie Hilson said that, everybody has a motherfucking breaking point, you know what I'm saying, he's reaching his, okay, granted, I've been in some relationships where it's just like, I probably should have left a long motherfucking time ago, granted, nothing didn't get too motherfucking crazy, never motherfucking, you know, physical, did you do, but, um, <clears throat> it's just like, He's getting to that point that he's reaching here. So the fact that he's now putting that boundary up, like, you know what? Since your mama's sitting here talking all this pop and all this smack, and my mom now wants to put her hands on her, which, come on now, you know, Mama Joe's, I don't blame, you know, Sharon. I'm just saying, you're talking all this motherfucking shit. I'm just, now, I will say, you know, from what I've been told, uh, Todd's mother, uh, Sharon, is dead. So even though I'm talking about this, if she's still living, just know that she's dead. So, you know, rest in peace. So, out there, uh, Mrs. Tucker, but <clears throat> it's just like, you, you can't be going in like that, but he's just like, you know what, hey, look, this is how I'm looking at it. so Candy looking at it like, okay, well, I don't want to be, be away from my man on the holiday, so she was like, I right, will, because she's mad, because he's not really throwing nothing out there to kind of help rectify shit, but it's one of those things where it's just like, you know what, Mama Joy is going to have to rectify shit for Mama Joy, just saying, but um, <clears throat> she was like, well, why don't we do this? Instead of it being, um, you know, you you know, you don't come, you da, 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 da. <clears throat> Why don't we stay together so we're not separated? And on one holiday we see my mother. On other holiday we see your mother. You know what? I can toast to that. 
<sighs> All right, so we're going to move on. Again, I need to go ahead and take another hell off of my vape, okay? Just in case y'all wondering what this is, this beautiful little thing. Granted, I'm not in, I'm not getting no money for this, but just in case y'all wondering, I got the uh, IPV3, you know, my pioneer for you. And this beautiful silver little thing right here. Very beautiful. And then, you know, I got the um, <clears throat> clone veil, you know, RDA. So that's what I'm hitting on right now. What I'm, you know, the juice in there. None of your business. So moving on. Now, um, you know, we have uh, Claudia, her family. Well, you know, her uh, mother, her grandma. She takes them to a uh, a drag queen restaurant. Now, right away, let me just say this, you know, because I don't want nobody to take what I'm about to, you know, what like anything that I say, you know, the wrong way. Because I'm one of those, and I even said this to a couple earlier. I don't give a fuck what you do, who you lose, who you screw. Any of that, I don't, like I said, whatever your preferences are, <clears throat> y'all real, does not care. I, like I said, as y'all know, I'm Jewish, got the mouth for sale too, but it's one of those things where it's just like, I'm not the one to judge you, I'm just saying, not trying to sing your religious, but Hashem does that, not me, <clears throat> and I ain't got time for that, because if what you do makes you happy, and it does not negatively affect me in any way, shape, or form, do you, boo-boo. But anyway, she takes them to a uh, drag queen restaurant. Now, I think the only reason why she fucking did that is because, let's, let's just be real, <clears throat> if you watching this for the shit ratchetness and the drama, at this point, you ain't brought shit to the motherfucking table. I'm just saying. So you're taking them to a drag queen restaurant. Come on now. I'm just saying. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to get through my own stuff. Talking about she want to push her, uh, you know, uh, mother or family was out of the comfort zone trick please and then you know she was she, i guess she uh, had mentioned either she had been doing or somebody had mentioned to her that um <clears throat> you know the men that she looked for are you know father figurely men and, you know it's because you know her father uh walked out with their parents of voice at 10 i don't know what all happened with that mom's not really telling but <clears throat> you know i won't spend a little bit of time on this so if you want me you Fast forward, but I don't want to sit here <clears throat> hit y'all, you know, with just a little bit of wisdom because you know, sympathy, spill of tea. So I'm gonna give y'all this. Here's the shit that blow me. I know in the African American community, and I'm gonna just say, you know, especially <clears throat> you know, my mother's generation and the generations even leading up to me is one of the things where what goes on in the house stays in the house, you don't talk about it, super shit on the rug. It's just the way the fuck it is. <clears throat> but it's one of the things where it's just like. <clears throat> You can only sit here and play the victim for so motherfucking long. You know what I'm saying? Your father walked out on you, so you want to sit here and, you know, look for a man, you know, who has uh, fatherly attributes. Betty, Betty, why don't you take your motherfucking ass to counsel? Why don't you sit here and these motherfucking issues resolve? Because as long as you sit here trying to look for somebody to sit here and validate you, look, if you don't validate you, they ain't going to validate you. The fact that you don't have a, you know, last relationship, as I say to any female, listen to me when I say this, you know, and I mean this wholeheartedly. A man <clears throat> will only treat you the way that you treat yourself. So if you don't treat yourself with respect, how the fuck you expect somebody else to give it to you? Take that how you want to take with a grain of salt. Again, this guy, we don't give a fuck how you feel about my opinion. But I'm just saying, I'm trying to help you out. Y'all want to sit here and wear, you know, certain little, you know, things. Let's be real, ladies. Long fingernails, the weeds, all the other stuff. You're not doing it because you're trying to sit here and get a man. That shit fake as hell. You're doing it because you're trying to sit here and impress all these other females. It's just like, be real with yourself. All right, this issue of, you know, Dad leaving now, better yet, you need to go to counseling for that. Get some results. Better yet, contact your daddy and y'all sit down and y'all hash that shit out. Because as long until you do that, you just ain't gonna have a man and you just ain't gonna have no peace and no happiness in your life. All you gonna be, again, I'm just gonna speak my mind, all you gonna be good is just a just good for a good fuck. There it is, I said it. <clears throat> Moving on. So then next thing is, you know, she wanna talk about, you know, being biracial and you know, look. <clears throat> If that's big for you, damn it, you got a couple options. Go holler the fucking Mariah Carey because she wants to hit <laughs> being a motherfucking mulatto. Get that shit the fuck out of here. Got it. Kids gonna be kids. They gonna make fun of you. Motherfuckers made fun of me. It is the fuck it is. Grow the fuck up. If it offends you or hurts you that much, go to counseling. 
gotta fucking enunciate that. And then, you know, she's sitting here, you know, her grandma said, I love you. She looked at the mom like, you know what, you never said I love you. And, you know, mom was just like, look, I do it by action. Your, mom, your father said he loved me, but his action said otherwise, so I don't say it. Oh, wow, well, you got more motherfucking issues. Guess what? Do you know what my vice is? I think we all know by now. I want y'all to say it with me. Go to counseling. That motherfucker simple. Not a whole lot, but it's one of the things which, and I've learned this in my life, how my parents are, you know, in talking with them, more or less my mother understanding where her mindset is in ideology and how she grew up, how my father grew up, and understanding their way of thinking instead of mine. Because again, I'm not going to say what age was my parents in, let's just say they had me a little too later on in life. That's all the hell you need to know. Okay. But it just shows that gap. That's all the fuck I'm saying, you know. But I'm going I'm to get off her. Uh, move on to the next one. Ooh, damn, that, that, that one hit me right there. So now I move on to page two. Okay, just when I say, <clears throat> I, I already don't like DD. Getting to the point where page really started to piss me the fuck off. I'm just saying, again, even when her parts come on, I fast forward, but again, because of y'all. I'm going to sit here and stick it out. I may get to the point where I really just want to fast forward fast call and shit. I'm just saying, you know, I just want to stick to the people that I know that I love is going to give me something. Just saying. <clears throat> but, you know, here she goes talking about how Apollo ain't home. Remember how the fuck you dogged him out at uh, Demetrius' uh, party? I'm just saying. Why the fuck would he come home? Just saying. I understand he about to go to jail. Why he going to jail? I'm not getting too deep into that because I'm already far into this video. Just go back, check it out. <clears throat> Fraudulent shit, silly motherfuckers. But <clears throat> that's that. You want to say and talk about so? Oh, his kids is not a top priority. Actually, his kids are a priority. Remember when he tried to come to the dentist? You know, office with them, and you sitting here giving him the cold shoulder. Come on now. Come on. Are you trying to sit here and put yourself on a pedestal and bring him down? Here's the thing. I'm not gonna discredit what the fuck he did, but don't sit here and discredit men. I, I get so tired of you know men being brought down over shit like this again. If you don't like what I'm saying, hey, comment below. Don't really care. But it's my opinion. And she won't talk about, you know, black women, we strong. The, the black women, yes, y'all strong. I love y'all. But here's the thing. Baby, get the fuck off your high horse. Accept some motherfucking responsibility. Dot, dot, dot. Fill in the blanks. I just say, I mean, I'm gonna be hard, but I just gotta say, you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> Now we at the part where this begins to wrap up, and I'm gonna try to hit this fast I can because this sit down argument fight thing <clears throat> was dry as fuck. <clears throat> no, I'm just saying, like I'm gonna try to get through what they said, but you know I got my motherfucking commentary. So it starts out, you know, with um, Nini and Portia walking into the restaurant. Can you call it? And you know, talking to her like, oh yeah, I buy these two. Oh my gosh, I hate Portia. I don't like because she don't want her to be that look, man. You the one that sat here, grab grab the girl hair, pulled her down. You know, I think she might have got some shots in on the motherfucking reunion. Again, just look at the motherfucking reunion show. That shit was hot. I actually enjoyed it. No shade. Kenya, you, if I'm being granted, there should never be any violence. But here's the thing. The way that I grew up, you want to see use props and put them in, in my face. I'm just saying, it's only a matter of time before I see it and I snap. Just saying, I'm not saying snap on a woman because I don't hit women. But I'm just saying, if it was another dude or some dude got a microphone and shit in my face, I'm just saying, I don't know. I might black out. You probably was the other side of me. Don't hold me on that. But anyway, <clears throat> talk about that. And then, you know, Cynthia walks in, you know, gives a kiss to me because apparently they made up and, you know, somewhat made up in the last episode. Whatever. And then she waves, not even waves, just kind of like, let go ahead, to, you know, Portia. And what the fuck was that? Three, two, one. That was some motherfucking shade. I'm just saying, like, come on now. Come on now, y'all do a little too motherfucking extra, especially for the camera. Man, y'all need to go ahead and get this shit up out of here. So, you know, Kenya comes in, she speaks to Portia. Portia speaks back. She was like, oh, so you speak? She's like, I speak what I'm spoken to. Look, first of all, I'm if she spoke back, come on, I can't. I get, I got it. You are the whole shit start. Okay, I don't know between you and Nene, y'all both start some motherfucking shit. But here's the thing, real motherfucking talk. 
if she spoke back, except the fact that she spoke back, move the fuck on. Y'all in y'all late 30s, early motherfucking 40s. I just motherfucking turned 28. Come on now, act like y'all got some motherfucking sense. Y'all being a little too motherfucking catty. Is the paper really worth the defamation of your damn character? I don't know. So then it go from that to, you know, Nene trying to be peacemaker. I've already said my piece about this. You ain't no damn peacemaker. You just want ratings and want that check. Just saying. And then, <clears throat> so here's how this goes. And I'm going to just read off this. So just, you know, just kind of bear me read off this. So you got Nene and Cynthia, you know. Cynthia want to talk about the confusion of not respect to her. Who the fuck really uses fuck? Because honestly, yeah, all the motherfuckers change. I don't fucking respect your ass. I need me. Get that shit the fuck up out of here. And that little motherfucking, I don't know what the fuck you want to call that motherfucking hairstyle. You not a much motherfucking fast Nisha, whatever the fuck you want to call a fashion guru. Please, get that shit the fuck up out of here. Why don't you go back to being your original size with your original motherfucking nose. And then maybe we can talk. Shame. So then, you know, seeing, you know Cynthia will to talk about, you know, she didn't want to speak up when things were uncomfortable. But now all of a sudden she got a voice. Hey, they got no people mad. Motherfuckers like, oh, so now you got a voice, you know what? Hey, at some point, quiet people got to speak the fuck up too. So, <clears throat> Kenya brings up, you know, if they were good friends, ooh, yeah, I got so So she like, so she pretty much brings up, like, if y'all were good friends, then why are you sitting here talking about her to me and posting stuff, you know, on the internet? And I feel that way too. Like, if y'all good friends, y'all have been friends for a hot minute. Because apparently, you know, the tension between or the issue popped out at the reunion of, you know, season six. But regardless, stuff got aired then. I got it. But what y'all should have did is, y'all should have, I, when the, everything was done, smoke clears and everything, y'all had time to come down, y'all talk to each other before, because except for what I understand, I don't really follow these motherfuckers on Twitter, Instagram, all that shit. I mean, granted, I do watch reality TV series because, hey, I'm going to be honest with you, it's a distraction. I love watching a little bit of ratchetness and at the same time watching motherfuckers for what it's worth who got money, go through the shit they got through and with a little bit of coins I got, yeah, I said coins, what's up, Tamar? But with a little bit of coins and shit that I got, you know, the fact that you going through this with what the fuck you got, it makes me even more, even more happy. Even the little bit of drama I'm going through, it ain't got shit on yours. Just saying. But it's just like, I don't know. It's just too motherfucking much. But the fact that y'all are supposed to be good motherfucking friends and then you sit here before even giving Cynthia the comments her, so you sit here doing interviews, putting this shit on all the motherfucking internet. I see why Cynthia mad. Cynthia, you should have fucking came at her like that and told her, hey, I'm not the one sitting here, da, 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 da. but the one thing about it is she was sitting here deflect like a motherfucker. You know what? Why don't y'all do this shit? Remove the cameras, take the motherfucking mics off, sit your ass down, do a mafia style. And if y'all gotta sit here and do it out without the cameras and get some motherfucking blows in, do that. But this shit right here, all I'm gonna say is this. if this little petty shit keep on, I'm probably not gonna be watching motherfucking season eight. Oh, okay, I might watch it, but just don't forget it because you know I love it. Love me some candy. You know what I'm so then it goes from that, and here's my little tangent. Portia gets up because she had to go to the, you know, restroom. King gets up like, I'm going to use the other restroom. Now, I wasn't thinking men. So I'm thinking they probably have nuts at restrooms, but now that I think about it, yeah, it probably was men. And, you know, you got um, Nene just like, yeah, go ahead and use the men's room. Oh, that's shade like a motherfucker. But you know what? She laughed that shit off. And I get the feeling this shit might have been staged, but whatever. It's good TV. They got my eyes watching it. What the fuck ever. So then, you know, Nene and Sydney, you know, they talked it out. He doesn't want to grudge, you know, but she said that she needs time, and it will take about a good two to three years just to have lunch or lurch with Cynthia. What kind of fucking shit is that? You know what? All I'm going to say is this. You got to be a controlling ass motherfucker to sit here and want to have so much dominance. You know what? Look, Cynthia, if it's that important to you, you want to sit here and say, I was go right ahead, but if she ain't trying to, chuck the deuces, move the fuck on. So, down with that, Cynthia and Portia. You know, they talk about the last motherfucker sit down. So they're like, you know what, look, man. You didn't even apologize. You, boy, you was late. You didn't apologize. And then you have um, Portia like, well, you didn't give me a chance to shoot the motherfucking flashback. I'm not doing one, but if y'all watch it, there was a motherfucking flashback. And it shows the dialogue. And there was enough time for her to say, so, you know what, I'm sorry for being late. But she want to be a little stuck up. Do, 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 do. And, you know, it is what it is. It's just like, again, you got two motherfucking wrong for this shit. 
grow the fuck up. So, you know, I'm almost saying this lie. You have time to apologize. Portia apologized for what it's worth. And then she wants to hear, yeah, like, can't you, you know, call her disrespectful and all that other stuff? You just not even gonna touch that. It's one of these where if y'all won't really want to see it, just watch the shit again. I'm getting to the point where I'm getting tired of talking about this shit. So then all of a sudden, you know, Portia and Cynthia make up. Now, here's the thing, like, I, cause I was sitting here watching it. It was on point of where it's just like either they cut all that dialogue the fuck out or that shit was truly just some made up shit for some motherfucking ratings. Love me Cynthia Thomas because you know, hey, my last name Thomas, I'm just saying. But I love me some Cynthia, but it's just like, come on now. Y'all doing too much. Y'all doing too much. So then we get to Kenya and Portia. So Kenya, you know, says that she has forgiven Portia. Portia's like, I, did I even ask her forgiveness? Come on now. Come on now. I don't know what your religion is, but come on now. Really? You coming like that and you being real ugly on TV? I'm just saying, do y'all realize the way y'all acting? And I understand this in the moment, but do you realize this is what you're being judged on? Just saying. Somebody said they forgave you. Regardless of whether you believe it or not, take it, move on. On to the next one. So, you know, Portia acknowledges the fight that they had on the reunion more or less her grabbing the old girl hair, you know, mm-hmm, get a little ghetto, a little ratchet. But she never once said, hey, Kenya, I apologize for my behavior. She couldn't, she couldn't actually, or she could just say, you know what, I don't apologize for how I reacted because those are my feelings in the moment, but I do apologize just how things went down because we could have handled things a hell of a lot more simply. I apologize for what I did and how things transpired, but she just acknowledges that she did some wrong. Anyway, and just to go ahead and wrap this shit up, this is what the fuck happened. He gets up, gives her a hug, wants to watch the You know, says she gets forced yet again, wants to move on, they hug it out, and they done. That was a motherfucking show. Now, I will say, I do love some housewives. I'm really not with that motherfucking hour back. I do enjoy seeing, the, you know, Candy and Todd and that shit develop again, because that's the only reason why I truly watch it is for them. But y'all losing me right now. I real talk, you know, <clears throat> Claudia. Like I said, the issues you got, go to fuck to counseling. Phaedra, guess what, Phaedra? Either you had some shit to do with Apollo, or you just motherfucking naive. For you to have degrees in all these motherfucking business ventures, some may probably ride up him. You know what, though? But then that, this was uh, my review of this particular episode. Like I said, I mean, if you want to, I know this is the first episode, and I know y'all probably like, what the hell going on with your head? I just got done with the gym. Still got my gym clothes on. I'm about to take a shower. As we're going to finish the cheat first, take a shower, <laughs> go to bed, you know, and go ahead and start with the next day. But, <clears throat> hey, if you guys like it, go ahead. Hit like down below. Please subscribe. And, you know, what I want to do is, you know, like I said, this is the reality. Might even do a little bit of celebrity, even give y'all my perspective on certain things. If you got a question for me or you want to hear my or a man's perspective or my perspective, by all means, go ahead and listen. So, with that being said, you know, hey, stay tuned. Like I said, the next recap or the next, you know, reality that I have coming up is going to be Love and Hip Hop, the original, which is New York next episode we'll go ahead and talk about that so with that being said all i want to say to you is you know thank you guys for watching thank you for the support like it subscribe have a great day have a great night have a great time all right y'all college boy